Thank you to all who have been supporting the channel by checking out our merch at rejectnationshop.com and becoming royal rejects. Citizens of the Reject Nation, as Koi and I are gearing up to cover the X-Men animated series in 97, come back, we decided we're going to watch one that's been highly recommended to us. Many have hailed this as the best Marvel animation movie. We understand it's like the second part of an anthology, but we were like, screw it, we're just going to hop to the second part because apparently finding the first part, it's a real pain. <laughs> uh, Hulk versus Wolverine. You excited, Koi? So excited. I love this comic. Talk about that soon. Guys, you know what to do. Slash that like button. Also, uh, thank you to Prepper for helping us out these highlights, the full and thrash watch on. You can catch with us on our Patreon page. Thank you all have been joining. And uh, hey. I haven't seen any Marvel anymore. I've known nothing. Yes. I'm the best there is at what I do. But what I do isn't very nice. That's what I like to hear. <sighs> no whiskers. It's not the original. Oh, a little bit of the shape, though. What the? Ooh. I love the sucker you into the instant grit. Immediate violence. So Wolverine's first appearance was in a Hulk comic, Hulk 81, 181. But then there's a mini series ah, written yeah. by Damon Lindelof of Lost that has the full version of the story. Woo! Whoa! Great reveal to the scale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a fun use of silence. That's great. I've wanted a Hulk versus Wolverine live action directed by Guillermo del Toro for so long. Oh, I'd love that. Like a creature feature. Uh, yeah. I think we're getting at least a scene in Deadpool. I think they're going to introduce at least one Wolverine with a Hulk. I hope it's Ed Norton. I think it'd be great. Nineties logos, like the little Weapon X in the in the Gamma tube. It's Canada, sir. I, I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but who are you? <laughs> no one you want to know, kid. <laughs> Ominous shades. Is this Ross? I assume. Looks like someone had a bad day. I love capturing Hulk in this perspective. Like an actual monster? I miss that. Yeah. The Americans call it the Hulk. Intel sketchy. Department H thinks the U.S. military's covered something up. He's never heard of Hulk. So we're seeing the origin from his perspective. That's cool. Ooh. He smells toxic. Ha. <laughs> Gunpowder, too. Someone tried to fight back. Oh, that's cool. I like how the scent leads to a type of vision for what he can fathom happened. Yeah, like s uh, some painted picture just from sense. Cape on the back. Sir. Let me cape the code picture. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see a cape. I like how short he is. I He's like appropriately how... short. Do you want us to try for a landing? Don't bother. I like how bushy his sideburns are with the flap. <laughs> 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 I like the, and the mask is a mix between his, like, the mask we know and the old classic. The Hunter. I can't wait for that video game. Just track and pray. Wolverine. <laughs> you know that's why Russell Crowe turned the roll down. Thought it was wolf. He thought it was wolf based. That's <laughs> 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 cool. It landed. That looks like a painting. Damn. I like this element of horror. Mm-hmm. The strings and tension. Oh, that's great. Hey, Bob, you haven't seen a big monster running around anywhere, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, stay back. Stay away from me. Oh, this is like Wolfman. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> Relax, crybaby. He's going to smell him, I'm wondering. Gonna... Yep. There it is. 
You smell toxic. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, there he comes. Love how Wolverine becomes the monster. Leave me alone. For your own sake, please go. You're in terrible danger. Uh, uh. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> There's a third claw that's gonna come out if you won't start talking. <laughs> Great sound design. Jeez. What a great way to capture the tragedy of Hulk right away. With two minutes of Bruce screen time. I don't suppose you got any interest in talking this out. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! What the hell happened? <laughs> I love the wake up cutaway. Let's do this. Come on! Awesome. They do really well capturing scope in this. The enormity of this brawl. Ouch. Wow. Wolverine's getting just, just flying around. Right yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa. Did not expect actual that violence. Much blood. <laughs> Ouch! In the face! It's also fun because Wolverine, his healing factor, he wouldn't play good defense. Like, he'd be- <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Little man, leave Hulk alone! <laughs> Jeez! The strongest there is! Rough. Ah, I love capturing the ferocity of him. We I definitely miss this. this Hulk. We need this. This is horrifying. Yeah, it's a Jekyll and Hyde parable. Like, he's so scary. Okay, bub. Bub. Let's try that again. Hell yeah. Oh, by the reflection cool. of Hulk in the claws. Oh, hell yeah. See, Deadpool R-rated, like, that's the only way we'd get this. I hope we get this. <laughs> oh, shit. All the sheen of this. Oh. Oh, bastards. Oh, I was not expecting the whole cadre. Is that going to be their weapon H? They have to team up now. Omega Red's definitely. Oh, Sabertooth. Okay. Sabertooth. Right. There he is. Down for weeks. Hey! hey. Hey, Deadpool! <laughs> I shot you! <laughs> <laughs> that lady Deathstroke? Yep. Whole gang. How strong was that Trank to take out Wolverine? Take out Hulk, too. True. Comic accurate red coat. Prepare the lab. They're on our way. We going to his origins now? Oh. Yeah, it must He's be. Waking up. Oh, we're getting the whole Weapon X sequence. Begin the adamantium bonding process. Yes, Professor. Commencing infusion. Shave that great haircut. <laughs> oh. oh. Blood extruding from the eyes. Oh. Ah. Excellent. Oh. oh, this is like full on body horror. You two can understand each other. You were science experiments. Blood gushing. Weapon X's mental conditioning and reprogramming are at stage five. Begin combat assessment. They're going through so much lore. <laughs> yeah, but they make up a lot in tone. That is a fun Hulk parallel, like this giant beast. I know him. He can't be controlled. You have his DNA, so just let me kill him. I'll take that under advisement, Saber 2. Oh, the different X's in the back. Yeah. Clancy Brown? Sounds like him, for sure. Experiments. Oh! X-23! 
Craig Kyle, who wrote this, wrote and introduced her. We are losing control. Initiate lockdown procedures and someone activate Sabertooth. Too late. This is better than X-Men Origins Wolverine. Very much so. Yes. Oh my god. I did not expect it such violence for it. It's so much. We've still never gotten to see this this way. I'm not used to I guess that's how I think of Marvel animation. I think of like just kid shit. Yeah. yeah. What if they did like a line of these? How well that do? Oof. Wakey wakey time. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Weapon X is indeed pleased to have you back, Logan. We put considerable time and money into you. And pointy things. <laughs> <laughs> Weapon X has been pursuing the Hulk for weeks. Oh my god. He's a hero. Ish. Oh, he's a hero. Oh, he's a hero. Okay. Okay. I'll erase Banner's memories and reprogram him. And then Weapon X will have the most powerful creature on the planet. Villain monologue complete. You should have killed me when you had the chance, because I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna kill all of them. I like how his cyborgs look like blades. <laughs> how have we not gotten a live action Omega Red yet? He's such a cool looking character. Hey, still have that unbreakable skull? Oh. Damn it. I like all the pass out transitions. Like there's so much time passing, but they play with chronology by letting the blackouts be a thing. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing here, Deathstrike? I'm about to start Wolverine's reprogramming. He has to die. He's more valuable alive. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> Sorry, prof. Gotta go with the lady on this one. How could you think you can control these people? Yeah. So many mad scientists. Oh. Man. It's like just true, but I feel like I'm watching Invincible. Yeah, it hurts. I'm gonna enjoy killing you for days. Then I think we'll drop the Hulk on an orphanage or something. Wow. Gaijin Dog, for the dishonor you cause my family, you will die. Even the Frank Miller Wolverine stuff, great work. Destroy Dog! Oh! Ah, the smirk smile. right through him. God damn. You don't heal like he does. Aren't there some runs where the, him and Wolverine, her and Wolverine had like a romance? But the Frank Miller run, yeah. Oh, Yes. Little berserker rage. Yeah. Give in to the darkness, Logan. It's the one thing when I watch the X-Men animated series is like, he never hurts humans. No, <laughs> not at all. Open hand slaps, <laughs> not claws. The last thing the professor said before the run gutted him was for us to kill Wolverine. You buy that? Yeah, you know, I would think the last thing he said was, ah! <laughs> Whatever you say, ponytail. You might say no to a little murder. Dragon pose. <laughs> he works well in here. He does. It's fun. He just Strike comes across like a psychopath. <laughs> and the fourth wall break ish to know we're watching. Strike a pose. Cool. Great perspective shot. You're going to need to get mad, my friend. Slap him around a little bit. Please, struggle. <laughs> Your death tastes so much sweeter. I think your claws would work. Oh, okay, nope. Oh, yes. <laughs> click, click. <laughs> the transformation happens when I feel angry or stressed. You're not stressed. They must have drugged me. 
suppressing my adrenaline. It comes from the cortex. Well, that'll do. Spike it up a little bit of stress. Let's dance. Hulk's immortal, so just let him out. You went for a kick. That was a bold move. <laughs> a little shin kick after that run. It's impressive how many characters work in this. Dude, that is just not cool. Could you give me a hand? That's so good. All right. I'll go get These wide shots do look like a comic book page. Yeah, they've captured really interesting frames at times. Oh god, now it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they need a whole team to take down Wolverine. Yeah, I always love the idea that it takes an army. Oh, that's straight out of a comic cover. Cut, cut them. In the comics, sometimes they say they're adamantium, like they're the same metal. Oh, sometimes they're organic okay. matter, but either way, it's his power comes from that, so he drains you. There he goes. <laughs> oh, they turn. This is so casual. Well, they'll <laughs> just hold on there, there for there, so long. Yeah, there, there he is. <laughs> Claw people. No, no way. <laughs> 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 Ouch. Little man. Hey. We're good now. Are they gonna know he's cool? Nope, doesn't know he's cool. Hey, wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> Who wants snacks? You do! <laughs> 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 we lost him! <laughs> I think we lost him! He's <laughs> right there! <laughs> oh, it's great! He's all yours, Einstein. No, Logan, we're for him! No! No! Little fastball special. Oh gosh. I want to see some of this dynamic of Wolverine and Deadpool brought to the big screen. <laughs> Grab her. He's that fast. Oh, that's cool. I like that use of speed. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Forgot his robot arms. Okay. Still. Still. Man. <laughs> His hair is intact. Yeah, Hulk took out the team. Go for it, big guy. Tear this whole godforsaken place down to the ground. Do it. Uh -oh. No. <laughs> Aw, he's not going to see Banner. It's going to be landed right next to Sabretooth. Convenient. All right, bub. Where were we? <laughs> Might as well. Just going to end there, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was cool. Steve Blum. Don't know him. Nope. Nope. Great art shows, though. Arthur Adams' work. No, it wasn't Clancy Brown. No, it wasn't. You're right. Just some Jim Lee. No Mark one Brooks. North. There was no okay. one North. Video game, Deadpool. Oh, cool. I love this Casada piece. That's rad. I wonder if there's a post credit scene. Could be. More Casada. 
More people will watch Marvel animation if it looked like this. That's real. And if it was this intense, like and if it actually like went for it. This is Lionsgate. If they actually embrace the maturity of it. Yeah. And because like these are such mature characters with mature themes when you let them be. Wolverine and Hulk specifically. It's dark as oh, shit. Oh, that Diodato art's cool. Um, I think that was a mix between this issue right here, this uh, first issue. I've heard that one. See the the, the, the whiskers? Yeah. They, they got rid of the whiskers, but they kept the face shape. Um, and then, obviously, there was some influence with the, the Todd McFarlane, but the Ultimate X-Men versus Wolverine, well, I, right here. That's the one. That that's was what one I of the first comics I've be. read. No way. Yeah. So that's the one written by Damon Lindelof. The guy oh, that is it? Lost. And it opens with him ripped in half and thrown across the city. So it opens with Wolverine, like, hobbling yeah. to find his legs. What year was that? I read that comic ages ago. 2006, 2005? Yeah. But I love... One of the first Marvel, like, I used to read DC and Marvel comics. So 2005, yeah, yeah that's almost yeah. 20 years old now. Uh, wow. A long time ago. Uh, it was the Ultimate Run that was doing so well after Ultimate Spider-Man, the Ultimate X-Men, mm. then they gave Wolverine his own little spinoff. I read it at a Barnes & Noble. Oh, like oh, the trade. Where you don't have to buy it, and you could just sneak off. <laughs> issue three yeah. came out, and then it was a year before issue four. There were so many delays. Yeah. So I read it week to week, not at a Barnes yeah. Noble, and I remember waiting a year to find out the cliffhanger. <laughs> I was very upset. Oh, man, there's so much beautiful art between the two of them. That's Ed McGinnis. I mean, and I've been saying that what I think Marvel should do with their animation is what DC consistently does, which is adapt their graphic novels. Yeah, and I mean, look, you have frames, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at the framework you have built in. And but, like, look how many characters they were able to uh, make interesting in 37 minutes. And they're also showing there's an amalgamation of influences, it's not just one. Yeah. Which and, is like a, a nice marriage. Well, and I think that, you know, you can have all these different stories. You know, they didn't even get into the X-23 stuff, but like they did... The classic origin, they did a little bit of Ultimate, they did a little bit of this, and it never felt like anything was shortchanged for it. No, what they gave us here was a very primal, immediate sensory experience of just the emotional undertones of what they're going through. And it's like great action and stuff, but it's like a slice, you know, and I really, I really like that a lot. And then the uh, credits being the comic influences shows like, hey, guys, this is our investment. This is what to check out. Like the Brian Windsor Smith stuff they're showing now. Patch. Patch. I think it's going to be Dan Radcliffe. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think that shot in the trailer isn't Hugh Jackman. I think that's, very, uh, that's definitely, uh, I think it's Radcliffe. So oh, this God. is only four years after the comic. Wow. So that's really? neat. They did that quick. Post credit. <laughs> he lives. I can't believe it. I'm alive. <laughs> I still would have liked an ending with Wolverine and Hulk, though. Citizens of the reject nation, or should I say royal rejects, because that is who we call those who check out our RR apparel at rejectnationshop.com. We come out with new designs every month or every two months. It is personally my favorite way you can support the channel. Reason being is because we are involved with every one of the exclusive RR designs that are up at the shop. Every month it's been growing. Every month we are getting more and more royal rejects, and I really love to hear how people are finding the shirts to not just be cool looking, but also fit nicely and feel comfortable. I cared about that more than anything else. I'm a hairy guy, so I'm really in, like sensitive to the fabric. We got a bunch of designs already, such as our Super Marvel Bro shirt. My sister actually designed this one. Deadpool Wolverine inspired, my personal favorite one. But then we also got our, like, our number one bestseller, the Last Daddy t-shirt, which has Pedro Pascal from The Last of Us inspired, carrying baby Grogu. We have Loki's glorious balloon. We also have our Doctor Who shirt, which is full of a bunch of classic Doctor Who quotes on the TARDIS. We have Space Babies of the Galaxy. We got ourselves some Star Wars inspired shirts. We got a Boys inspired shirt. And we have a House of the Dragon one as well. Pointing those out because obviously we have new seasons of those shows coming up. And then of course you got a bunch of other designs as well like our Batverse one. Who influences the influencers? Another Last of Us inspired t-shirt. And of course you know the classic reject symbolism t-shirts as well. Either one is an amazing way to support the channel and like I said, you get to look good while doing it. So thank you guys so much. Do consider going to rejectnationshop.com. And also, 
tag us on social media if you end up buying a shirt please tag us we'd love to see it when people do end up buying the shirts thank you royal rejects see you guys soon i don't know how they could end it without the who won uh the I, age I, old I, problem of versus yeah and i and i like that especially after like godzilla kong they, they're really clear on making defined winners yeah and they, I, they didn't team up here at least for long which i liked hulk stayed crazy uh, well, it seems like he just redirected uh, his Hulk's, rage. Hulk's attention for a while. Yeah, and then at <laughs> yeah. the, I like at the end that his rage went back to Wolverine. Yeah, that I, I just would have liked some type of uh, conclusion on it because at the end of the day, it does feel more like um, a very long, short film, which is what it is. It's part mm-hmm. of an anthology series. So uh, I, I do wish that it did have a little bit more of a completion to it. Fair. Uh, but... For what it is, I, I think it was like it's still an excellent. I think it's a great experience. I think that's the whole point. It's giving you an experience. Yeah. And for an experience, I thought it was really strong and visceral and pounding. And, and I, I want like the blood and the gore and the violence. And it makes you. It, it, and watching this at this point in time with what where Marvel's at and the you know constant opinions that you hear about what Hulk has evolved into in live action. And while it seems like people love Mark Ruffalo, the human being, the the portrayal of Hulk is also something that uh, they, they haven't really seemed to get down in live action proper. And I, and like I said, at the beginning of this, I've, I've always wanted a live action Hulk versus Wolverine movie. And I, I thought Guillermo del Toro would always be the perfect pick because he'd probably try to do it in some form of practicality. Mm-hmm. And you get some like giant actor to be the stunt man for it, you know, <laughs> or just build stuff for build people something. to act off of, you know, True, and then yeah. like you could use close ups and then, you know, I think it'd be like Jurassic Park, but he could where still you get, could use yeah. like the T-Rex robot and then you add CGI to it. Then he would still get the violence, though. Yeah. He'd still get the gore and everything. And, and like that crimson blood, like feel like that, that crazy atmosphere he can build, but make it like a psychological horror because immortal. Have yeah. you read any Immortal Hulk? Nope. Immortal Hulk is a full-on horror comic. It is just horror. It feels like a Stephen King novel come to life, but it's Hulk. Uh, so it's terrifying. It's creepy. It's unnerving. It's that Dracula and Hyde stuff, and I'd love to see that on screen. You know what I love? It's for people to buy some shirts from rejectnationshop.com. I'd love that, too. Because while looking at Koi, I was remembering that, oh, yeah, we got our uh, new Marvel shirts. This, I haven't got mine in yet. This one excited. is uh, our number. In a, in a day and a half, it became the biggest seller we've ever had. It's fantastic. I know. It's my favorite shirt. I mean, Great with concept. good reason. Very Great. excited. I think it's a genius shirt. I know what I'm wearing to the first day of this, them watching it. I know. I'm ready. Man. And I've lost a little bit of weight. It's a little big on me now. It feels good, right? I know. It's a good, good problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think that way the Hulk should go would be to have something happen that, that breaks him where he becomes the rage monster again, because I do think he's been smart Hulk too long. But I don't think Marvel will go that direction. So that's why I'd rather see if we're ever going to have Hugh Jackman fighting a Hulk. I'd rather it be in Deadpool because then it's a different it, it's sure. the what if option because I don't want to see the Mark Ruffalo Hulk and Wolverine as much as I want to see this. Well, there's so many things about that I, that I love with what they did here that I do wish Marvel could learn from bringing in. There's like pros and cons to Hugh Jackman coming back for this. One is like we get the payoff and the catharsis of having that fulfilled that he gets to do something with Deadpool, gets to be in the MCU in some variation. Mm-hmm. The problem is we're inevitably going to get a new Wolverine, and then now sooner that, than later, now, now that you, like that, you need a distance from he Hugh Jackman. He was gone so long, he and now gone. it's like, oh, remember how great? Yeah, I and now like, oh, great. Now we got to reset that whole thing again for whoever comes back. Like they were already inevitably going to be comparable. Uh, yeah. Hugh Jackman, but now Hugh Jackman's going to be fresh again in everyone's mind. I'm really so wondering if they have them both in this movie. That would probably be a, a decent transition, kind of like a Doctor Who situation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the passing the torch, passing yeah. the cigar, bub. Yeah, in, in a sense, and. I like the hunter side of Wolverine mm-hmm. here, and I like the brute force of him essentially being some kind of assassin in a way, but more importantly with Hulk capturing the horror, capturing the tragedy of this guy. You know, like uh, we had a, a little bit of it in the Edward Norton one, uh, but here, the, uh, like the, the, the immediacy that you get, it just feels like classic universal monster movie. Like you were saying, Jekyll and Hyde. I was, I was kind of feeling a little, I think Jekyll and Hyde's a more apt comparison compared to like the science behind him, but mm. the tragic quality of Wolfman. In oh, a way totally. Is, uh, of like, I can't, I have a hard time remembering what I did. Uh, whereas like, um, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, to my understanding, they still kind of communicate. Mm-hmm. Or, and there's a like, little bit more nefariousness with Jekyll and Hyde, like from yeah. both parties. Whereas the Wolfman becomes this like violent monster who just destroys and kills, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of both. So I like capturing that tragedy behind it. And I also like the duality, as Coy likes to say, 
of seeing the monstrous side between Hulk and Wolverine. Like, there's a reason why I think them pairing up works so well just as characters mm -hmm. and not just as physicality for them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. And the, the brutal science nature of it is interesting, too. Like, they're both yeah. experiments. They're both, like, monsters. I love that they use the Weapon X program to show him, like, fighting the bear and the parallel of size and how, like, that would feel normal to him and how he was, like, a weapon. And they're trying to turn Hulk into a weapon as they've already turned Weapon X into a weapon. Like, there's a lot of really beautiful parallels, but at the end of the day, they're both good men that feel like monsters. And that's what I've always been fascinated by with Wolverine is he's a man who did horrible things. He killed men, women and children, but he always got erased. He always had all those things wiped yeah. from him. And then he just had the guilt of the weight of those atrocities. And then Hulk gets that wiped from him. Like yeah. Banner remembers fragments of that rage. So in a lot of ways, they're very similar characters, tragic figures of monsters that have done things that have, that have not been in their control that have also been erased from their memory. And I think that the, movies have touched on that, but I don't know if we've ever gotten the depth that the, obviously the comics have been running 60 years, but this did a really good job capturing very quickly the depth of that horror, like the mental horror of not realizing what you've done, like the blood in your hands, like waking up to it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that touch that they did with, I've never actually seen that, or maybe I, I, ha I don't know. Everything's a blur to me immediately. Uh, when he when he's when he's um using the Wolverine scent sniff when he's going around the crime scene, they don't use it a lot in the movies, and, like, and it's such a key part of the character. I, I remember the Wolverine game there was that leak, and uh, Wolverine basically sniffs around, and they did kind of like a spider sense thing to like have him find stuff. Yeah. And everybody's like, not everything has to be Spider Man. I was like, guys, Wolverine is yeah, like that's a that's power. His... You just only know the movies. <laughs> like that's kind of a thing Wolverine has. <laughs> well, watching the animated series again, uh, and I'm seeing how like oh yeah, that's right. He doesn't really touch humans with his claws he just constantly whips them out and the big light shines <laughs> just yeah. a threat yeah but he doesn't <laughs> often use it it's like yeah i haven't fight sentinels just keep going find it keep fighting always robots. fighting robots always with fighting claws. machines because you can't have them stabbing people in this Saturday morning cartoon but when he uses the scent and then it becomes a bit of that, that sherlock holmes-esque yeah know, like this theoretical vision of what went down uh, I, th I thought it was a really great way to show a visual enhancement of the set. And that'll be a great way to distinguish the new Wolverine from the one we had. I think there are certain Wolverine character choices that we never got to see mm -hmm. that this used the scent, um, the him being like weaponized in a more direct sense. Like in the ultimate comics, he's literally an assassin hired to kill Xavier and he infiltrates uh, the X-Men as it means to get closer to Xavier, starts crushing on Jean Grey and literally gets whipped into being like, ah, maybe, maybe I won't kill her because I'm going to take right. time to like sleep with Jean. And like, that's a fascinating take in the character is like a, a Mel Gibson Riggs, you know, like that, <laughs> oh, yeah. that like, ah, why yeah. now while I'm here? And uh, I really love that, you know, much like Riggs, he's a, is a broken man who has a history who was special forces and all these things but there's an inherent like there's a reason to keep going and there's a reason i want to become good and there's this mm -hmm. this element and i feel like we've gotten this really charming hugh jackman portrayal that is very authentically wolverine but the character's so multifaceted there's enough pieces we haven't gotten that if they focus on those the new actor can have a better chance of not feeling like he's just doing Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, and the scent yeah. is a huge one. Well, I think the anti-hero side of him is, I've always, in live action, we still kind of view him as the hero, regardless. Always. Even if you lean a little bit more gritty and rugged, like even Logan, which is one of my all-time favorite. It opens with him getting, like... <laughs> yeah, it's one of my all-time favorite comic book movies, uh, Logan. Uh, but even then, I wouldn't still call him, like, anti-hero, right? And even though Hugh Jackman plays to that, He's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's such a likable he's still, guy. He's still a hero, you know? And this, to me, was anti-hero. Like, I love capturing the monstrosity that came out of him. Mm -hmm. Like, the way this short went down, when he's hunting for him, and the way he's perceiving everything is he's hunting a mysterious, ominous monster in the woods. And then he finds Bruce, and the second he detects who he is... Just suddenly the flip happens and now Wolverine seems like this terrifying monster. Like this guy's like a, a, a the feral, feral little, little, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's <laughs> terrified, you know, this like gaunt human who just like, no, leave me alone. And that's the other part of Bruce Banner that I think makes, you need that strong contrast, you know, yeah. where I feel like both like Ed Nor and that I, I love how they, they address that here. He's just, as a human being, he's terrified of himself all the mm -hmm. time. And I think this animation really brought that to life. And I think in live action, he's usually kind of just like depressed or, 
you know, reluctant. Just, yeah, just trying to just stay calm. But but there's there's an anxiety to being Bruce, which I thought it got captured pretty like more so. Like I love the yeah. like the the heart rate thing and like certain things yeah. where he was like on the run, but he couldn't go. Like there was this tension, this ticking clock that I don't feel like we have anymore. And I think Avengers did it okay. I think the sure the most we've had a Hulk that feels like the comic Hulk was Avengers. Like especially the brutality and like the you know the rampaging through the city and there was a charm to it, but there was still a fear. Yeah, I think Bruce Age Banner. Of too. Bruce Banner, I, I, I view as someone who constantly lives in a state of fear, mm-hmm. and not someone who can just like socialize with people. I know, right. I know he can, but I, I this like what was cool about this short is they captured not Wolverine, the X Man. Just they just captured Logan Wolverine. Yeah, and they captured them at their most isolated, their most lonely. And I feel like that's what we got to bring with them back. I don't think I, I'm not the not an impression, especially with Wolverine. Hulk. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially Hulk. He's, My he's but, a family man. But we've <laughs> domesticated Wolverine, and yes. now it's time to introduce a less domestic. Like, yeah. post X Men, sure, he can be somewhat domestic, but I, I think they need to bring in a feral. And yeah. I think that Hulk would be great to see, even if it's briefly in Deadpool, his full sure. rage self. And I think Deathstrike, th- this reminded me, I, I forget about Deathstrike. And I, I I think it would be good for her to get a, a second shot because in, in like X2, she was just barely. She was like a hot hell Yeah, henchman. just being yeah. hot. Yeah. Like, she was ferocious when she was fighting. Uh, that's that moment when she's underwater, she is. Yeah, monster. there's cool visuals, but I don't remember the characterization very strongly. I don't remember like the history hinted at because I think the animated series does introduce her as well. And, and that might have been one of my early, that must have been my early introduction. Everything about my own introduction to X Men was the animated series. And I like, I like the, uh, I, th- I think a live action tends to shy away from making, especially women, yeah, <laughs> that make like, them a little sexual, like the sexy, but I like the bloodlust that comes out of her. Oh, that's fascinating yeah. about the character, and she's always yeah. been like that. I love when Jim Lee draws draws her because Jim Lee's always got that inherent sexuality, but there's this also ferocious uh, edge to his line work that when you put those together, Deathstrike is like, why is this so hot and scary? <laughs> like, there's yeah, like a, yeah. a nest yeah. to it. And then I think uh, Omega Red's got a fascinating character uh, arc that doesn't really, we haven't really seen in any medium who's, outside. Who's the guy in Shang-Chi? Uh, with the arm? Yeah. Oh, his name escapes me. It's, it's not something. Omega Red, right? No, it like no, some no. Half-assed Omega yeah, Red. It's, yeah, it's literally a character name. Like, it's a character that I've read in two comics. Like, it's one of those okay, characters right, where right, it's right. like, okay. Yeah. But no, Omega Red's in tons of books. And another great Jim Lee uh, visualization is just those tentacles drawing power and, like, draining the energy force out of people. And he's just got this, like, super intense. He's one of the only people that, like, Wolverine has a little bit of, like, he has to keep up with. And I thought they, they handled him well here. And they also uh, did some good stuff with Deadpool. Um, the first couple lines of Deadpool, I was a little worried. And then it... Then it built up yeah. like the first two lines I was like oh no is this not gonna be a Deadpool I like and then then the jokes really started landing and Nolan North's always exceptional yeah I mean we don't really see Deadpool in mediums where he's not the lead yeah so this is like a, a rare opportunity to see like how do you just like throw Deadpool into something and, and then once it, it literally runs by camera I'm like that's great. that's <laughs> yeah. great like give me attention I'm Deadpool <laughs> Yeah, this was excellent. I love this. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. And and how many characters did we just list? Like 10? And they got good characterizations. Sabretooth is the, the only one we didn't list. We didn't. And he was just, I mean, that's, that's unfortunately, it's kind of Sabretooth. I've never really been a big just Sabretooth. Tall Wolverine. I've seen a lot of Sabretooth uh, interpretations in many, media, in many like different things, right? And Sabretooth is, is such a constant, you know? He, I like and the is idea he, is of he him. considered Wolverine's arch nemesis? Is yeah, that? and like there's some continuity where he sees his brother, and there's some continuity where like, you know, he was the big other good weapon at Weapon X, then Wolverine became better, so he was jealous. There's continuity. Like the current run of Wolverine, there's actually like literally right now, like this week's issue, uh, there's this cool idea where every one of Wolverine's birthdays, Sabretooth has done the most atrocious thing he could to ruin Wolverine's <laughs> life. And right now there's this thing called Sabretooth War where he's gathered all the multiverses of Sabretooths and brought them all to like eviscerate Wolverine's entire family as one last. So he's like, he killed X-23, he killed like, it's this bloodbath of Dude, Sabretooth that, just taking people out. It's funny. It's insane. And so it's kind of like Invincible where it's like all these multiversal things, but it's a saber tooth killing Wolverines. I really dig that. And that, I, that that's, I, the I comic dig, can do that. I dig something from Sabretooth's perspective. Yeah. And I'm it's just, just like, nuts. I must destroy him and he just can't succeed. Yeah. He's just so him. jealous that he's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and all the other saber tooths are like, what's, what's your thing with yeah. this guy, bro? <laughs> oh, that's funny. But like, I think Shit. the live Schreiber version was the closest we'll ever get casting wise. And that intro to the Wolverine is amazing where they're fighting through mm. all the wars. Yeah. Remember oh, that, like the slow-mo? 
Well, oh, X Men Origins. X Men Origins Wolverine. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. not not the Wolverine. X Men Origins. When they have the intro, that's the better movie. Yeah. It's like a five minute credit sequence. That's the better movie than the actual movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I'd love to see Saber Tooth get handled correctly. Saber Tooth, I just generally think is a boring character. Who was the guy? The guy that played him in the first movie, Tyler Bates. Yeah, uh, Tyler uh, Bates. I think Tyler, Tyler Maine. Tyler Maine or Tyler Bates. Tyler Bates is the musician, right? I think his wrestling name is something Bates. Tyler Maine might be his real name. I remember. Either way, he uh, he, he was a lot of people's introduction, and I thought like he did a, a, as good a job as you could with that script. But I remember thinking like, oh, they're not letting him talk. <laughs> like I remember, yeah. like I don't think he said anything in the first exit movie. No, 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 no. Same thing with uh, Death Strike as well. Yeah, it's just their vent. But we've gotten better. Like I mean, people like to crap on Marvel. It's very popular to do now. But at least we have evolved out of that phase of comic movie. Yeah. I think talking about this short is, is really interesting because you could review the short itself, but then you could also see like things Marvel could learn and things that you kind of miss that Marvel ought to maybe lean into a little and bit. And if you look at like Lionsgate distributed it, it's not a Marvel. Th- yeah. This was Lionsgate 2008. Does, like John Wick and Saw, you know, they do like. This came out when Paramount revised. was doing uh, Iron Man. Right, right. That's right, what I mean right, by the yeah. date. Like Marvel wasn't a distributor yet. Mm. They teamed up with distributors. Lionsgate distributing this means Marvel had the characters. They made the thing, but it was allowed to be like this because they weren't the ones putting it out. It wasn't their own house yet. Different, different peak time for Marvel. Yeah, I think 2008 was like. I mean, I was just I like love, X-Men then. It was like X-Men uh, and Hulk. Iron Man had come out in 08. This was probably like the same month or two of Iron right, Man. So right. This was probably a summer release, and then we had had X3 in 2006. Okay. And then Spider-Man 3 in 2005, I want to say. It was like Spider-Man 3, X-Men 3, and then Iron Man was soon thereafter. Because yeah. I remember it blew my mind that they wanted to have Andrew Garfield in the Spider-Man's, uh, that Spider-Man <laughs> in the in the MCU, and then that's when everything fell apart. That's how, because Spider-Man was like 2012. It was like right. during the MCU, but my brain can't put those things together. You know, I feel like if they do, especially revisiting X-Men and even watching this, I do think the key to really saving Marvel is figuring out your mutant world. Oh, mutant and Fantastic Four, like the Fox stuff. Yeah, I think I, I, just think, to, I think mutants more than Fantastic Four. No, people are super jazzed about that. But I, I think we're just excited for something new that's big. But I think X Men <laughs> are hundred percent. Like that's a whole universe. That's yeah. a, that's an entire Avengers to itself. Well, it's a whole society, and it's and it's yeah. one of the most captivating it's stories because you feel so connected to all of them. Because like you you go through different communities in. The, like Marvel has introduced different communities, right? Mm-hmm. Wakanda, Chang Chi people. You've got the school. You've got the Mola <laughs> Chang Chi people. <laughs> but then, but then you have, uh, but but mutants is worldwide problem. Yeah, you know, and it's a commentary on so many things. Yeah, so I I really think that will. I know. Yeah, I I feel like that could really, but Marvel would have to mature. I think that Deadpool is going to be like, I'm excited for Deadpool for 562 reasons, but one of them is like buy tickets because it'll show Marvel what we need. <laughs> like yeah. that's one of those where it's like, guys, look, look what's done. We right. can make a billion dollar R rated hit. All yeah. right, good. Now make more of them smaller. Yeah. Like you, yeah. we need Marvel True. to mature. That's a great point. That's and a great point. 2008 was a while ago. We're adults. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, that was it for today. That was it. Um, I, I think our a- review was as long as the short. I mean, <laughs> led to a, a lot of different discussions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Substantial. Yeah, I loved it. That was uh, such a good time. And if uh, if you enjoyed it, check out uh, Uncanny. I'm sorry, not Uncanny. Incredible Hulk number 181. When they first fight, check out the ultimate. I didn't know he read Wolverine versus Hulk, which came out about 2004, somewhere in there. The graphic novel came out. I don't out. remember. Oh, you should have to check I don't remember that. most things. It's like five issues. I don't remember most things. a real things, quick no. read. Uh, the quicker the read, the less, the I less re- you remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and then also check out anything Wolverine and Hulk that Ed McGinnis drew because it's uh, some like beautiful, violent stuff. So check those three out if you enjoy. That's your mini Koi's Comic Corner recommendation at the end. Um, that, that was so glad I saw that. That was such a blast. That was great. Yeah. Well, thank you to the 5,000 people who watched this video. We appreciate each and every one of you because we can count you. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys Bye. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Flev Doran Flev <laughs> It is the month of spring break And I can only imagine What Flev is getting up to He is Watching all of our videos Yes People keep inviting you out Going Flev It's spring break There are and girls And St. Patrick's Day And St. Patrick's there Day are Irish and, and girls Irish girls at For the, you At the beach yeah. Getting sunburned just for they us right now, your Flev. Suntan we lotion. need to go. And Flev is just constantly like, I nah. can't. 
The nah. Real Rejects keeps uploading too many videos, <laughs> too many hours of content, and I made a promise to myself that I would watch every single one of their videos, even if I'm not interested, even if I don't like the hosts that are in this said video. <laughs> I have to watch it. At 0.25 speed. This is what happens, man. Flev, sometimes people become super sexy rejects, and then they end up losing their social life. I've seen so it's many people, problem. they've lost connection with their families. One time, we had someone, parents, both, dying of the same disease <laughs> yep. in the hospital, yep. died at the same time. But what were they doing? They were catching up on all the trailer reactions that they missed from us over That's the years. what we could all hope for in terms of a lifelong lived. Now, while we love it, now, while we like to hear it, we've been told that ultimately that is not a healthy option for people who watch us. So, Flev, my dude, hit pause on this video. Hit pause on that video you were watching of, of Tara and and uh, and Andrew and, <laughs> and, and just go, hey, you know what? I do need to go outside. Women need my attention right they do. now. They're desperate. Flev. They're deprived. Go out there, slather some women in love. Even if they don't want it, do it. <laughs> do it. Just go up to them. Just slap it on them. Slap it on slap everyone it on you them. see, man. Just and everybody in town. You'll you, be a you hero. Enjoy, you enjoy. You enjoy what you're doing because you're doing that for you. Not for them. No, <laughs> it's your world, Flev. We're just living in it, all of us. Reject out.